we meet up with J.C. Dugard at a ranch near her house. For the past five years, she's been coming here. It's a kind of unexpected training ground for building independence. There's a riot of animals of all kinds. And then down here is the barn. There are even miniature horses. Good girl. Aurora is a speed freak. <laughs> After all the obedience and forced submission for 18 years, she has had to learn the basics of becoming herself, how you make choices, and the ordinary interactions of buying something at a store. You want to receive that one? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. You too. And what about going out in crowds? That's easier. I, I prefer not crowds. Still? Yeah. She says the hardest thing to conquer is the terror embedded inside you, for instance, of strangers and what strangers can do. When she was taken captive, she was just that 11-year-old child heading toward the school bus. For months, a little girl locked in a shed saw only one person every day, Philip Garrido, who warned her if she tried to escape, there were dogs outside the door. He threatened to sell her to other people, so she would promise to do more for him. And then, a month and a half after the first rape, he moved her to a new shed and put the stun gun out on the table where she could see it. He told her demon angels, voices in his heads, had revealed that she was supposed to help him with his sexual problems. And that you were saving other little girls. Yeah. Yeah, how stupid is that? He cuts out pornography, dresses her up in makeup, mascara, tight dresses. Snatching a little girl and then making her dress up, you know, it, it's all about control for these, for him, for these other freaks that do this. She has written how he smoked methamphetamine and began the 24-hour marathons of sexual abuse. I remember one night when he dressed me up. She remembers looking in the mirror. All I saw was a frightened girl who I didn't even recognize with mascara running down her cheeks and the saddest face I had ever glimpsed staring back at me. She's afraid what he'll do if he sees her tears. I did not want to provoke the sleeping dragon. A man six feet four inches tall, a little girl barely four feet six, 80 pounds. She says she had to study his rages, his demands, and writes about animals in the wild that play dead to survive. I was a predator and prey, you know, very much prey, obviously. But predator too, you know, I really had to analyze him and stay alert, like stay sane. Which is why she says she's on a kind of mission today to change the way we talk about victims. She's outraged by a phrase used often in this country. She says the phrase implies that children cracked by terror and abuse become affectionate toward their captors. The term is Stockholm Syndrome. Is it Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome, which means she developed a bond with her abductor. Bond gets deeper the longer the person's held in captivity. Stockholm Syndrome was first used in the 1970s in Sweden to describe a connection hostages formed with bank robbers there. Why do you hate the phrase Stockholm Syndrome so much? Well, it's really, it's degrading. You know, having my family believe that I was in love with this captor and wanted to stay with him. I mean, that is so far from the truth that it, it makes me want to throw up. You know, it's, it's disgusting. I adapted to survive my circumstances. There's just no other way to put it. What was he? To you. He was always my captor, you know, there was, I never forgot that, never forgot that. She's even been invited to speak at Yale and Harvard and Mass General. Hi everyone, um, my name is JC Dugard. She urges experts never to use the phrase again, reminding everyone what terror does to you and how many children never make it back alive. Are there things from the backyard that you still can't confront? that you have not written, that you have not even allowed yourself to say? No, I've, I've let it all out, because you can't keep that kind of stuff inside. It is not her shame. Those things happen to her, they're not who she is. This is J.C. Dugard's therapist, Dr. Rebecca Bailey, who says you have to stare fear in the face until it cannot hurt you anymore. She wrote again about the sexual abuse. Did you ever feel like saying to her, don't write it anymore, don't talk about it anymore, let that go? No, because I think one of the most important things of working with survivors of abduction is allowing them to have choices in every single thing they do. So I never thought she wrote too much about it or too little. I think she wrote just 
what she needed to do for her. Dr. Bailey owns the ranch where animals are used to help victims of trauma learn their own strength, a place where young woman can learn to dominate a creature 10 times her size and physical power. It's an exercise called joining up. Joining up is about a certain amount of authority that they have to see you with. It starts with a kind of psychological duel between horse and human. She has to show she has control, conveying what she wants to the horse without saying a word. So they have to see something in your face. Mm -hmm. as, as like their leader, the one in charge. Right. And watch what happens when she moves in silence. The horse responds by walking behind her. When she runs, the horse follows in lockstep. It is a portrait of how far this woman has traveled, from the little girl looking in the mirror and weeping, broken by terror. I don't see that ugly, broken child I was. No, I don't see her. Leaving behind that 11-year-old girl who was holding on to life in that backyard. So I wonder, have you seen what it looks like today in the backyard? No, I haven't. This is it. Wow, they just bulldozed. Looks like somebody else lives there now. Wow. But it's gone. Yeah. It's dirt. No, that's a good thing. And maybe a haunted history. Yeah. yeah.